In this first episode of our four-part series on Python and Django on Azure, Carlton Gibson is here to show us how to set up a Python application with Django and Django Rust framework using Visual Studio Code. From installing the Python extension to using the integrated terminal to debugging, today on Azure Friday. Hey friends and Pythonistas, I'm Nina Zakarenko, a senior cloud developer advocate at Microsoft focusing on Python. Today, I'm here with Carlton Gibson. He's a Django fellow, a maintainer on Django and Django REST framework, along with a bunch of other applications. Hi, Andy. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, hi, well, okay, today um, I'm here to show you um, how to use Visual Studio Code with a Django application. So, um, as the example application, I've cloned the REST framework tutorial project, which I suppose most people will be familiar with. It's um, a simple snippets app where it exposes an API where you can create snippets and then they can be highlighted, like code, code snippets. Um, and it's got a browsable API and all the rest. It's, you know, it's a, it's a nice project in that it's big, it's fully features, but it's not so big to get in the way. Yeah, looks um, like a helpful utility. Yeah, and um, I've cloned this project to, to to show the visual code integration. Um, so let, let's get on with that. Um, here, I've already got the project cloned, um, uh, and I've got the virtu a virtual environment set up. So that's just to show you that. And let's just quit that terminal, because we won't need that, and hide Safari, and we'll open Visual Studio Code. Great. And then let's open the REST framework tutorial. OK. And that brings it up. And in, in, the, tu in the tutorial here, um, in the tutorial app, we've got snippets. And so there's a snippet model, which has it's a jank, classic Django model. It's got fields, title, um, the actual code, the line numbers, the language, um, and this highlighted field, which down in when you save the model, it runs it through the pigments um, syntax highlighter and gives you highlighted um, code. So we can see this in action. And, um, what we can do is we can bring up a terminal here. So I've just used a little um, shortcut there to bring up um, a new terminal. Mm -hmm. um, That's control backtick, right? Yeah, control backtick. You can do it from up here on the menu as well. Um, so you've got new terminal, run task, all, all kind of things going on. Um, ah, no, hang on, we've got to do something first. Visual Studio Code, what, it has um, great integration with Python, but you need to install the Python um, extension to get that to happen. So let's just close the terminal because that's not going to work for me at the moment. Um, the, this Python extension, it gives you syntax highlighting, it gives you code completion, it gives you all sorts. So if you're going to use Python, enable that. And then we need to just reload to activate it. OK. And then in, well, in this list of extensions, I've got some other ones, Azure, Azure extensions, Django templates that support some Docker, other things that I use. We'll come back to those mm -hmm. later on. Um, so let's open our models file again. And now that you have the Python extension en enabled and installed, there's a few new things here on the screen, right? Uh, yeah, so right down the bottom, you see it, uh, loading Python interpreters. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll also be um, analyzing the code in the background. And so. Look what's brilliant here. Down here, it's automatically detected um, my virtual environment. Mm -hmm. And it's selected that, and it's, it will use that when we fire up a thing. It says PyLinter is installed but not enabled, so let's enable PyLinting. So that gives us extra um, niceties when formatting our code. Mm -hmm. um, so let's try that thing with the terminal again. If we open up a terminal, now Visual VS Code, because it detects my virtual environment, it will automatically source it and activate my virtual environment. That's great. So, yeah, so it's just less typing, less running around. And then we can do our very familiar manage.py run server. So that's going to bring up our Django application. Yeah, exactly, as we, you know, as we do lots. And then I, um, I can hover over the URL. I can just alt click, and that will open the URL. And here's, here's the application. So we said. We had this is an API application, okay, and this is a browsable um, interface. But if we can select a different format, we can select JSON format, and then we get a raw JSON response, which Firefox nicely highlights. Wow. And all that's done is adds the format JSON query parameter, and through content negotiation, it changes the display format. 
So this whole beautiful API browser is part of Django REST framework. Yeah, and so Django REST framework provides that out of the box. Um, so look, we can look at our snippets, and there's a few snippets in the, the database, and they will have um, this highlighted view where you can access the pigments highlighted, um, syntax highlighted snippet. So that's the yes. application. Um, let's go back to the application root. And it's got some functionality. And what I wanted to show you was how, um, how easy and how quick Visual Studio Code with the Python extension enabled makes coding in Python. Um, so we've got functionality here. I just thought we'd add a, a little bit. So let's um, hide our terminal. And let's, um, we've got, on the um, API already, we've got users and we've got snippets. So let's <laughs> add groups, because we've already got that. So the first thing we need when we're adding a, um, adding code is a, a, a serializer. So all I've done is I've used command P and it brings up this panel which you can type any file name and it will instantly find it for you. And that uh, serializer describes how to display the model yeah, so in it's the a, API browser. Yeah, exactly. So the, here we are. The um, autocomplete knows that I want group. Mm -hmm. And so I can, so we've got to use a serializer here, but let's create um, another one. And here we get some nice autocomplete with a template. So um, Visual Studio Code lets you create um, te code templates with parameters, which you can cr easily create the boilerplate code wow. in, in one go. So I've just put a new line in there for some. Oh, hang on. Right, I've got two. So, so there's the, the um, there's the serializer, um, which will control the f render the fields of the, the model fields into um, a format that can be serialized to JSON, and then beyond that, we need um, a view set to add it. So again, at the top here, we probably need to import group. There you are. The autocomplete knows about that. And let's um, create a view set here. And these view sets bind the model to the view. They, um, so a view set is a group of, um, so a Django view function is um, something which maps an HTTP request back to a response. Mm -hmm. And a view set is a group of those. And okay. so a view set implements po a post method, a get method. So this is a read-only model view set. So it, it will offer you a list view and a detail view by default. And you get that out of the box without doing anything. Ah, a group serializer, what's this? Group serializer used before definition. That's because we forgot to import it. So if we come up to here and we can, we can oh look, group serializer. Brilliant, that's what we need. Let's save that. And then, so with the serializer and the view, um, view set in place, we just need to route that to the URLs. So this is again standard Django stuff. Um, we go router and then we can register um, um, under the groups. Oh, wait, I can't spell today. There you are. Views dot group view set. Okay. So before we move on, you showed us how to um, take these templates yes. for for code that you just have to type in over and over again. Can you show us how those were configured? Yeah. So okay, brilliant. So if I just come down here and um, go to user snippets, and it's Django code snippets, and then I've just got a file here. Um, with, with the snippets in. And so here, let's take the model serializer first. Um, it's called model serializer, and then it's got a scope, which is um, like, when's it relevant? So it's Python. Some things are relevant for JavaScript, some are Python, some are HTML, whatever. Um, and the prefix is, is what you type. And you, so if I'm going to create a model serializer, I just want to type serializer, and then yeah. the autocomplete picks it up. So you hit tab, and then it puts in the body and lets you type in those variables. Yeah, right? so if you see here, it's got a placeholder for model. And because this one is named model and the one below it's named model as well, it will let you fill in both of those at the same time. And if you look at the um, view set serialize, um, snippet just below, it's got model, model, model. Well, if you're typing group view set, group model objects, all groups here, it gets a bit repetitive. And Absolutely. these kind of templates let you, let you avoid all of that. Yeah. So very quickly, we've and added these. A bit of unfortunate naming, but those snippets were Visual Studio Code snippets and not the snippets that were part of our application. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. They're not Django REST framework tutorial example objects, no. Um, so the, the looks like the terminal's reloaded, so we'll alt click to reload. And let's have a look. And their groups have appeared. 
And a lot of this is, you know, REST Framework features. But what we've done is we're able to add those features to the application with very little typing very mm -hmm. quickly. So that's, that's kind of what I love. OK, so one other thing I wanted then to show you was um, debugging. Yes. So here on the um, application, I've added a Django admin for the Snippets app, app application. And the admin is um, one of Django's killer features. Um, let me show you the actual code for this, because there's nothing to it. Let's just close that terminal window. So all you do is you define a model, a model admin here, and then you register it on a particular model. And then Django gives you, out of the box, this whole admin UI. That's free. incredible. So, well, it's yeah. you know, historically been one of the um, features. So let me just create a, a, an example. So there's a bug in this. And th this is slightly tinned for the example, but it's a real bug th that I came up with in real life. So and you might have a, so in the API, users can create their own snippets. But you mm -hmm. might want to manage them or whatever. So I'm going to create one. And then there's this highlighted box. Now, this highlighted box, if you remember, was came out of the model. In the save function, that was filled in. Mm -hmm. uh, that was generated when you saved it. Um, so that, that text box should contain our highlighted code. Exactly. But mm -hmm. if, I sa if I save it without the highlighted code, I get an error. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? Why is that? So let's debug that. Um, so debugging, there's a few few things you've got to do first of all because this is a new setup. I've got to create some. Um, I've got to create a configuration. So I just click that add launch configuration, and um, Visual Studio Code creates a whole set of default of different environments for p debugging Python. Oh. And the one that's relevant for us here is this Python Django. Um, what example? So it does run server and it gives it gives it the right command so that you can run a debugger. Um, now I just need to add a feature because I want to um, debug inside Django itself. Nice. Um, and as you start typing, there's autocomplete here and even a little bit of documentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's super because I would never remember <laughs> debug standardly. I'd be looking up in the docs, whereas the autocomplete means that I don't have to do that. And I want to set that to true because if it's false. You can mm -hmm. only you only debug your own code, but okay. I want to go into the site packages and debug um, in there. So if I let me sorry, let me bring up the admin file. Now I want to debug. So this isn't saving right for me. This mm -hmm. mo the model admin isn't is got this error in the form. So I want to look into model admin. So what I can do is I can right click there, and I can click on go to definition. And this will open the file inside Django. So this is in site packages, Django, contrib, admin, options.py, which is the main um, file in the, for the functionality. So we can see what's going on under the hood. Yeah, we can get down as low as you want to. It's, and then what, I need, what I'm looking for here is a particular symbol. So I can mm -hmm. use this menu command. I mean, it's a shortcut. But to look for um, the exact place in the, for, in the um, file that I'm looking for. And I'm looking for the change form view. And this is the, the, the Django view function which processes your submission when you submit that form. So down here, OK, so here's where the model is saved. OK, if it's valid, it's called, say, model, then obviously that's not happening. So I need to have a, a look. So I just click here, and I can add a breakpoint in, into the J Django admin code. And then I can run my debugger. Oh, hang on. Let me stop that just one second, because I think. Uh, so there's, there's a few different configurations there. So we want to make sure that we select our Django one. Oh, you're very clever. Look at, look at that. That's, so what I've selected there, oh, stop. <laughs> Hang on, now I'm right. Look, I've selected to run the current file in right. the integrated terminal. That's no good to us at all. So yes, I select the Django yes. profile that I want and run. Pair programming is much more efficient than uh, Absolutely. Not. OK, brilliant. And so it's launched the, the um, it's launched, it's run server, but inside the debugger. And this, this bar at the bottom has turned orange. Orange. Yeah to indicate that the debugger is active. OK, so if we come back to our, our form that was an error, and we can see, OK, and all of a, all of a sudden, that breakpoint is hit, and mm -hmm. we, can then, um, we can then examine that. So here, we're in the terminal, which is showing us the output from run server. But if I just switch across to the debug console, then I can, I can examine. So I get some autocomplete, I can examine the form instance. So this is the snippet form that's bound to the data that we've submitted. Valid unknown. So let's find out. Form is is valid. Let's get on the bound. 
and it's not. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's the error, <laughs> right? So, but what? Hang on, let's have a look. Um, form dot errors. Let's that's going to tell us what's what's wrong with our form. So highlighted. It's the highlighted field that it's required, but it's we don't want it to be required because it's supposed to be set during model safe. Right. So okay, now with that in place, now we know what to do. So let's just stop the debugger, um, and let's go back to the admin.py. And this passed that I needed to do something here. Yeah. Okay. So I need if I add it to read only fields, and we're going to set that to, to a tuple. Um, and we're going to add highlighted as a read-only field. OK? Great. Now, if we come back to the terminal, and we can um, let's just we'll run server ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this fixes our bug. Well, hopefully it will. Let's have a yeah. look. Um, OK, so I need to refill the form because it because it was um, because it was in the debugger. I'll just put some code in there. Line numbers, yeah, why not? Give that to me. Ah, and look here, this highlighted box no longer appears. Uh -huh. Because we've made it a read-only field, it doesn't matter. And if we and save? And so I can save, it, it works. There it, it goes. Right, and so anyway, there's an example of how you can use the debugger in Visual Studio Code to dig down into your code and work out what's going wrong with your bugs. That yeah. was so easy to set up. So today we learned about Python on Visual Studio Code on Azure Friday. On the next episode, we're going to learn how to deploy this to Azure App Service.